Hi, so today I'm going to show you an experiment which demonstrates several properties of transmission lines. The first thing is, of course, the transmission lines themselves. That's about two feet of 50 ohm coax. Uh, this one here is about 12 feet of also 50 ohm coax. And then this last one here is, uh, I don't know, eight inches of 75 ohm coax. I wish it was a bit longer, but we should still be able to get some meaningful result from such a short piece. There's also several um, connectors and terminations we'll use. The first is this BNC T connector. It's just, um, it allows you to connect three cables together, or even just two, if we just leave this third port open. And I will be using both configurations of it. Another is this right here. This is a 50 ohm load that I made. It's two 100 ohm resistors in parallel and they just connect the center conductor to the outer conductor. Similarly, I have made a short circuit. The outer conductor again is connected directly to the inner except this time it's just a piece of copper instead of a resistor. Now these are essentially the more professional versions of the piece I just showed you. Green is a 50 ohm termination resistor, pink is a 75 ohm terminator. So now the other equipment that we're going to be using. First is this oscilloscope. We're just using it as a regular old oscilloscope, nothing too fancy there. This is a DC power supply set to output 5 volts and that will be used to power this circuit right here. This is a square wave generator I made, and the uh, main feature of this generator is that the output rises and falls very quickly. I'm not talking about the period of the square wave, I'm talking about the time it takes to go from 0 volts to 5 volts. That rising edge, or the falling edge, is about 2 nanoseconds. That's very quick. It just produces a square wave with very fast edges, especially they are very fast relative to the period of the square wave. We don't really care what that period is, so long as it is much, much longer than the time scale we are interested in for the rest of this experiment. So, that chip generates the square wave. This bunch of resistors sets up the 50 ohm output impedance. Uh, we'll be measuring from right here. This is uh, this set of terminals is, well, that's where we'll measure from. This is the ground that we'll, we will measure relative to. And the coax cable, cable <laughs> will connect on here. SMA connector output on the board, adapted to BNC for the cables that I have on hand. This is the oscilloscope probe we will be using. You can't use your typical ground lead here because that's, that lead is so long it just has way too much inductance. Instead, we need to use this much shorter ground lead in order to get reasonable measurements. So, now we're actually done and I'll get on to measurements. So, we'll take a square wave and first I'll just demonstrate that we're outputting a square wave. Zoom out far enough? Yeah, we see a square wave. And I'll zoom back in so that we can see the things that are relevant to us. Turn the cursor off, and you can see a little bit of ringing on the start. That could be eliminated if I <laughs> did a little better with designing the printed circuit board. Well, it's not going to hurt us that bad, so we'll just deal with it. So, first thing, we'll take the 12 feet of line and connect it to the output, and now the uh, the output of the generator the end of the line is terminated in an open circuit. Which... which means that we should see a step. And we do. And I'll do a single shot so that I can step back a bit. So what we see is down here right at the start, the generator output is low. And then the generator output jumps all the way up to 5 volts. But because we have the 50 ohm output resistance and a 50 ohm transmission line, it only jumps up halfway. We've essentially created a voltage divider that uses the generator's output and the characteristic impedance of the line as the division resistors. 
However, transmission line is not the same as a resistor, even though it has a property called impedance and it's measured in ohms. It's not a resistor. The, the fact that this is not a resistor becomes obvious when the voltage then jumps up to the full 5 volts. So what's just happened is the signal has gone, well, gone into the line, gone all the way down to the end, reflected off the open end, and constructively interfered with itself back at the beginning in order to create the 5 volts. An alternative way to think about it, since we're dealing with a square wave here, is that the open circuit on the end has finally caught up with us. We're finally seeing the effect of the fact that the end of the line is open. So, I mentioned at first that we would be calculating the length of this line, and, well, I'm measuring uh, 37 nanoseconds from the first rising edge to the second, and that 37 nanoseconds, it's the signal's round trip time. We only want the one-way journey, so 37 times 10 to the minus 9, we'll divide that by 2 so that we get the one-way trip, and this happens to be RG58 coax cable, and that type of coax cable has a propagation velocity of 66% the speed of light. So, times 0.66, times 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second and essentially right now we're just solving distance equals rate times time and we will find that this cable is 3.663 meters long and 12 feet 3.66 meters well that's pretty much spot on it's exactly what we that's exactly what we were expecting to get so we've demonstrated that math works as expected now I'll show the effect of different types of termination. We've just shown the open circuit. Next I'll show the short circuit. So. circuit. So I'll stick my short circuit on the end of the line and we will measure again. Single shot capture and notice that well, the generator's off, generator's on for a little while, and, well, why did it seem to shut off? Well, the generator didn't shut off. What happened is that the spot we were measuring at, um, the short circuit finally caught up with us. The signal went and encountered the short circuit at the end of the line, and the reflection destructively interfered with itself and canceled out when it got back to our point of measurement. I mean, it was canceling out the whole way it was going back, but we're only measuring at the one point. So that's that. So that's the short circuit case. And again, notice that the uh, time it took the signal to go down and back did not change. So now we'll do a 50 ohm load. The line impedance matches the source impedance, which again matches the load. So, what are we going to see this time? If you want to pause and think about it, this is a good time to do it, because in 3, 2, 1, there's your answer. All we see is a little bit of noise from the fact that this is a real experiment and not an ideal one. The line impedance matches the load impedance, matches the source impedance, so the voltage and at our point of measurement never changes. There's maybe a little bit of a blip due to the fact that this is real components instead of ideal ones, but the point stands that there's no reflection. All of the energy that went down the line was absorbed exactly as we expected it to be. So, next I'll show what happens if we have a mismatch termination. This is the 75 ohm load. But that doesn't work, so I have to use my T connector. So let's put the T on and measure again. Now make your next prediction on what you think this is going to look like right about now because, well, there's your answer. This time we see it level out at, that's two and a half volts right here. We see it level out at the halfway voltage because we have a voltage divider made of the source impedance and the line impedance, but then when the load comes into play, when the end of the transmission line comes into play, it jumps up to 3 volts because that's the voltage 
that you get when you put 5 volts into a voltage divider made of 50 ohms and 75 ohms. So, the astute observer might be saying, well, you also added the T connector. Can you prove that that isn't the difference? And yes, I can. So I can take off the 75 ohm resistor and I can put on the 50 ohm resistor. So we'll put that on and do the measurement one more time. And doesn't that look awfully similar to the measurement from the homemade load? It should. It's exactly the same result. So that is the effect of several types of line termination. All right, I've brought back the measurement for the, uh, the one 12 foot section terminated in an open circuit. And I brought that back so that we can use it as a reference for what happens when the line is a little bit longer than we previously measured. So I have my T connector on here. As long as I leave this third port open, everything will work out just fine. The, uh, this new piece of line will also terminate in an open circuit. So let's connect that and see what happens now that we have a little bit longer line. And instead of the 37 nanoseconds that we had before, well, now we have uh, 44 nanoseconds. So it's 44 nanoseconds to go all the way down the line and bounce back. So 44 times 10 to the minus 9 divided by 2 times 0.66 since both pieces are RG58 with their 66% the speed of light propagation velocity times 3 times 10 to the 8. And we get that the new line length is 4.8. I'll call it 4.36 meters, and sounds entirely plausible to me. That's the effect of a slightly longer line. We've just increased the delay. So now, let's show what happens when there is an impedance mismatch between several pieces of line. Now this is where the 75 ohm coax comes in. This is RG59 instead of RG58. Uh, 58 is common for all sorts of radio equipment. 59 is common for uh, CCTV, um, essentially old security cameras, and it is also used in cable TV, like you know, just regular cable TV in your home, and it's also what you would run up to the satellite dish on the roof if you have satellite TV. So this happens to just be a very short piece of that type of cable. So we will insert that between the 50 ohm cable and the generator. All right, so now what are we going to see with the 75 ohms inserted and the open circuit end like before? Well, that's what we see. And it looks, it sure looks awful similar now, doesn't it? And we even see uh, now we have 38.8 nanoseconds delay from one end to the other and back instead of the 37 nanoseconds we saw previously. So there's a certain delay that we incur by adding that piece of cable. Well, of course we get a delay. There's more cable. That's not the interesting part. The interesting part is this ringing. Now, if I had more cable, we would be able to show an even more interesting result, and that more interesting result would be where this levels off. Instead of leveling off at two and a half volts that we see because of this cable being so much longer than this first piece, we would see first leveling off at three volts, and then leveling off at two and a half volts, and then the end of the line would catch up with us and we jump all the way up to the full five volts. But since we only have this short little piece, the only thing we have to analyze is the ringing. And as you can see, the cursors are currently marking the extremes of that ringing. So what's going to happen if I then remove the 75 ohm coax? Well, place your bets now. Here comes the answer. 
the ringing is reduced if the 75 ohm coax is removed. And that reduced ringing is because we now have, ideally speaking, it would be a perfect impedance match all the way along this entire system. So what if, what if you didn't believe me? What if you were thinking that this T connector is the issue? Well, fair enough. But I also have a second piece of uh, RG58, the 50 ohm coax that we had used earlier. And I will use that to demonstrate, hopefully satisfy, that it is in fact the characteristic impedance of the 75 ohm cable rather than just the fact that there's the extra length. So still have the open circuit termination. Now we have the extra 50 ohm coax. And as you can see, the ringing did not significantly change from just the uh, longer piece to longer piece plus shorter piece of matched impedance. I nearly forgot the last experiment I was going to show you, which is what happens if there is some kind of fault along the length of your transmission line. And essentially a fault on a transmission line is a unexpected change in characteristic impedance. And that could result from your line being crushed or the insulation being broken and water getting in and corroding the cable. It could be any number of essentially fault conditions. And the magic of all of the stuff I've been showing you is something called time domain reflectometry. This can become, uh, it can be a very advanced topic to study. There's optical equivalents of it as well as what I'm showing you here, which are all RF, time domain reflectometry. You can use this last kind of measurement, this last aspect, to find a fault along the cable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to essentially create a fault on my cable. And the way I'm going to do that is using my BNC T connector. So the line ends in an open circuit just because, well, that's what we're going to end the line with. It doesn't actually matter what the line ends with. What matters is that we have something other than an open circuit on the third port of the T. Now, if I put a short circuit, well, we wouldn't see anything particularly interesting. We would just see uh, the short circuit experiment I showed you earlier. So I'm going to use the 50 ohm load that I created. And essentially, you have a 50 ohm resistor in parallel with the last section. So, now what we see is, and what you're seeing with that dip is the effect of this, the effect of this resistor. That resistor is essentially in parallel, it's acting as if it's in parallel with the 50 ohm impedance of this cable for a short period of time. Uh, I should say the period of time where the signal is going down this cable and then back, reflecting back. Um, and once that's all taken care of, you'll see that the signal never rises up or drops down. It's because, well, after enough time has passed, after the end of the cable has come into play, we just see the effect of the 50 ohm resistor. Now, that is truly the last <laughs> experiment I was going to demonstrate. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.